this collaborative inquiry and to make the claim that what you're doing literally every day in your practice and what we've heard with the stories today is actually contributing to the flourishing of humanity. Now, that will be in South Africa on the 18th of July. What I'm also hoping is, because I've been asked to give a keynote in Dublin next week, and also uh, to link up with an American research association to give a keynote there through Skype, which is all about creativity. What I'm hoping to do is to, again, draw attention to the creativity that goes on every day in your nursery settings, to say, look, this is where the hope lies. So when you ask me the question, where might it go from here, and Joan, I think, will be able to speak a little more about this later, because, you know, as well as locally, we've got the collaborative inquiry going. I think the significance of what it is that you're doing has got much more global influence than just within this room or just within our settings. So I hope, you know, just as an initial response to you, which I think is a superb question, um, I, I'm hoping that just gives you some indication of where it might be going. Is there anything other, other that you feel, you know, just in terms of your own experiences today, that you'd just like to share with us before I actually just talk a little bit about what I'm saying is the educational significance, which has been, I think, obvious today in the presentations, but also something that you might not have thought about, which is, in my, my judgment, that you're all literally researchers. I think that everything that you're doing as you try to improve your practice is also part of a research process. And that's what I've been working on, to show how practitioners can bring their knowledge and share it in a way that brings values that haven't been brought into the universities before, can actually be brought to the forefront, like this quilt. It is, it is, if you look at the quilt, it is quite remarkable with those hands joining together, the sense of the love and the care, which is right at the heart of this. Now, this is what I'm saying about the universities and the knowledge that is actually portrayed in universities really eliminates some of the values that you live every day. And, and my judgment is that we can do more now to bring these into the universities and also share them more publicly. But let, let, let me just get one or two more responses about your experiences of the day. And I, I really thought that, you know, that question is one that is, is really stimulating me, you know, because that's what I'm working on myself. Any others that you're feeling? Yes, these are my experiences of the day. Can I, can I just say, um, I, haven't, I didn't manage to get here the morning, and I'm really disappointed about that. But just being here this afternoon, I found it really, really emotive to listen to the work that goes on with, with parents and practitioners in settings because, I mean, I have shed a tear because I think it, it, it is that strength of, of um, relationships that is, is the key to all of this. And I think also there's been a lot of mention of confidence and I think that that is something that is growing day by day and this type of, of collaborative inquiry, this type of of, of working with, with practitioners in settings is enabling that confidence to develop and the more people that come and see and share the work that is going on, the more that is going to happen and it will grow and swell and that is the kind of groundswell that we need to see in this city and, and beyond. But we've got fantastic people working in this city and they just have to realise that. Yeah, I would imagine that, you know, I think we would all identify with that. What I'm not sure of is this, that as you say what you say, the sense of personal responsibility, you know, for actually helping to take this forward is something I'm hoping that everybody feels today. Because without that sense of personal responsibility, I'm not sure that we will actually develop it. And at lunchtime, I was talking to um, someone called Jo, who couldn't stay this afternoon, but she said, uh, Jack, what, what I think we're doing is developing a community of feeling. And it struck me that that was very significant because when you say about the emotion, I think you will all recognize how vital it is to show your feelings, to show the care and the love that you have. But within a community of the nurseries that I've experienced and that actually worked in, that community of feeling has been very powerful with a sense of personal responsibility for doing the best for each child. So again, I hope what you've said there is very significant, and I think everybody here, if you can just take that sense of, okay, what am I going to be trying to do to actually enhance this flow of the values and the energy, not just within our locality, which I think is very important, but also wider than that. Any, any other feelings that you feel? Yeah, from the day, this is what I've actually experienced. Jeff, yeah. can I just say that I was involved in, in the collaborative inquiry from the start? <coughs> 
and then I moved positions, I moved up to Newsley, and just what you're saying then about moving it out, that's what I'm trying to do, is actually I'm hoping to take from today um, and take it back to where I work to try and get something to work in up there in Newsley, so it's not just yeah, again, you know, I really like that sense of the collaboration, and I think this is what John's been promoting. But also, you see, we've got Nigel Harrison here, and Nigel is from Bath and North East Somerset, and he's coming with his colleague Christine Jones, and they're also working in the Bath and North East Somerset area, along with Marie Huxtable, uh, to develop these kinds of ideas. We've got somebody here for, who works in the university um, in the west of England. <laughs> And again, you know, I think we are connecting it, but we don't know many of us here. You, you know, there's a really big audience, but we need to find a way, I think, of doing what you're doing, of recognising what it is you're doing where. Yeah. Can I just say that I think that I, I only learned about this yesterday, so I feel extremely privileged to be here today and, and experience what everybody else has been taking part in in the last 18 months. I just think that to take it forward without any definite plan to take this forward and spread it further across the city and enable other people, other practitioners to benefit, <coughs> it would have been great, um, and maybe this is a possibility, if um, the people that took part in it could have been accredited in some way or, you know, have come away with some kind of uh, qualification as reflexive, trainers in reflexivity or something like that. So that they can go back with some authority to the people that they work with and say, look, this is what I've learned and isn't it fantastic? And people if people recognise the qualification as, as giving something to authority, maybe that's something that could be done in the future to extend the practice. No, I, think, I think again we'll find that that is absolutely vital. You know, we, and a number of us are working on uh, the continuing professional development programmes that will allow the work and the accounts to be accredited. And I, I do think, in the, you know, for the future, and what we're now trying to work on, that is a fundamental issue. But, and we'll be able to show you on the web, um, there's a programme that we're now getting together, a continuing professional development project, and Marie Huxtable, who's working with the camera here, has put on the web to, to do that very thing. So again, I, I agree with you completely, that is vital. But it's also how are we going to sustain some form of communication? And again, maybe Joan can actually just outline something that will enable us not to have this just as a one-off event, which has been amazing for me in terms of just seeing this growth of understanding and the knowledge that has emerged today. Um, quite honestly, I mean, I could not have dreamt of the significance of this day when we first had our first meetings. So it's been quite dramatic for me. Now, is there anything else that you feel? Yeah, I'd just like to mention this. Yeah, do you want to? Um, I've heard things today, a few things that have really shocked and angered me. Um, your story about your little niece and nephew, and little Alfie. Um, you know, we don't have space for children like that here. But that anger has also been balanced by um, seeing the fact that sitting in this room and reflected on that board were people who who aren't looking at children like that they're looking at Alfie um, and the love and the hope um, that, that I see there um, balance that, that sense of outrage but I think they're both very real um, emotions that, that I've experienced today yeah the uh, you know that balance of emotion I imagine it's something you all recognize that um, I sometimes feel myself that sense of a contradiction. You know, I actually want to see a more loving community. If you're coming to uh, my own university, at Bath University, when I was working there, you, I think that anger, in fact, I gave a keynote in New York uh, to express my anger at some of the things that were going on in my institution, and then tried to talk about the importance of channeling, and it was re channeling that anger and the fury into the loving creativity that I felt for the work I was doing with my students. Now, I felt that that was present in all of the presentations. You know, um, parents that were feeling very distressed about the lack of the valuing of their child, and but then finding context that we've seen here where the child was actually valued, recognized for who they were as a human being, and actually responded to with that love and that care. Now, that's, it, it's not ignoring that 
uh, the fury, the anger, it's like the cuts at the moment, you know, I mean, it's legitimate, the anger and the fury of what's going on. However, we're actually all trying to work within some of those constraints to do what is going on here. Not in a utopian way, but saying, look, this is the realistic process that we're engaged in. So again, I think we've got to bring that into our analysis. Is, is there anything else? Yes? Can I, can I just say, I mean, what's been through is about the value that's given to the young people, but the other side of it is the value that Liverpool City Council and Liverpool Hope have given to the practitioners mm. and the value that's actually in, in, embodied in them in terms of the knowledge they have. And I think that is absolutely wonderful that, that you know, that's been valued. And what I've seen coming out of that, it's not just for children and young people, um, but for the practitioners themselves. I've seen what looks for me on, on today is a growth in confidence, a growth in actually, I can do these things. That's got to be great in a, in a time of austerity, in, you know, in terms of motivating staff and keeping things going. So I, I'd just like to congratulate Janice and Joan and everybody else, really, for, for that. Nigel, and it also fits in with what you were saying about accreditation, yeah, because Janice is actually researching her practice um, in relation to what Nigel has just said, to see if she can bring her knowledge of what, how she's been doing this with her values, and Joan and myself are doing the same, or really Nigel and Chris are all trying to research our practices, and this is where I think your research and your inquiries could be so significant. Now, I'll, I'll just finish by just mentioning something which I, many of you may not have um, seen yourselves as um, and it is to do with the educational significance of what you've been doing because I think we've seen that demonstrated today I think every presentation has highlighted the educational significance of the early years educator especially with that notion that Joan brought in about every moment counts and that was responsiveness I love the work with Emma, with the two-year-old, with the nappy changing, the engagement, and the way Cal actually demonstrated with the use of the doll. You know, some of you actually care, but it was paying no attention at all to the actual child, you know, because it was, it was just like a technical exercise. Now, if we can just think now of yourselves, and this is quite difficult, it, it is, I think everybody here literally is a knowledge creator. Everybody that we've heard present has come out of a unique setting with uh, quite unique histories and talked about the difficulty of that first piece of writing she did. And when we read it, literally, we were blown away because Anne talked honestly and openly about some of the early years, experiences that she'd had, you know, as a child and how it had influenced who she now felt herself to be. Now, that idea that you yourselves are knowledge creators with possibly developing this sense of a responsibility to bring your knowledge and to share it with others so that we can influence the world more fully is one that I'm not sure that you've actually thought of yourselves in those terms. And it, it does mean taking on a word that you may not feel easy about, and that is you are researchers. I, I think that everybody here every day is making a judgment about what is good for a child it's improvisatory, there's an artistry in trying to sense what is important for this particular child at this moment and how do you respond to that child. And for you to be actually doing that, and I'm saying the professional work of early years educators could mean you sharing that, just as everybody shared their knowledge today, could help us to transform what counts as educational knowledge and the status of early years educators. <coughs> could I just ask, does that, does that make sense? Because it's not something that the early years educator, if you like, has actually um, emphasized. You know, the idea that you are knowledge creators. Every day you're engaged in a particular kind of research that I call action research. And it's where you think, look, this child, it's, the experience isn't as good as it could be. Now, what can I do about it? And what you're doing all the time is imagining how you can make this experience better. And you're acting on it. And then you're evaluating what you've done for that particular child in the group. Now that is what I understand by research, the systematic process like that, that I think you do every day, but what you don't do is make it public like everybody else you know, has done here today. They've actually shared their account. Could I just that? Am I making sense there? Because it's so important, this, I think, for your sense of responsibility. You know, that sense of you, to take your idea forward, you know, how do we move this now forward? It feels to me that it will come out of this room 
and in response possibly to what uh, Joan has been working on in collaboration, also Janice, because Nigel's right, but it's largely Janice initially in terms of her belief in this for Liverpool, <coughs> then with Joan, and then Joan encouraged me to become involved, that's that helped, I think, this inquiry. And just before I close, I just want to mention one thing, and that is in your packs, <coughs> you've all got, I think, this text. So, so it's all my show. And I think it's going to be published, isn't it? Yeah, this one, well, yeah. So it's been accepted for publication. Now, in terms of my life as an academic in a university, this counts very highly. It's been published in a journal, it's been what's called referee. And what I just want to suggest to you is that this writing, I don't think it can be improved for this particular journey, but I think you might see as you read it that there's something very important that is actually missing at the moment from this writing. And I've been talking to Joan about it, and it's something I think you could help with. That Joan has, through her conversations, and Janice has as well, she has nudged a lot of people, including myself, to sustain an interest in this collaborative inquiry. Now, those qualities of relationship that Emma demonstrated, Cal has, I, everybody who's presented, has developed a quality of relationship which actually here comes under this, uh, the love and the care, this particular part of the quip, love and care. And this is expressed through the body. It's actually something which we express in our relationship. You can feel it from people if they actually believe our, our authentic. Now, we don't quite know yet how to represent that. But you already know you're doing it every day. Now, I'll just make this suggestion. You may not want to take it up, but... I think possibly sons and daughters will be able to do this better, certainly than I know mine can, better than I can. But if you take the social media today, like YouTube in particular, where you can put up a video clip, just as you've seen these video clips, and you can actually talk and share the values, just as you saw Sue do it from Hopscotch, and then the staff of Hopscotch sharing their values and beliefs, that could actually be on YouTube, and we can actually access it and see it, and that can go for everybody in this room. You've all got that free access to put up your responses of your values and what you're doing actually in that social media so we can access it and then remain in contact with each other. Now, that, I would hope that you'll just think about that as something which, for a start, it may put you off because the idea of being videotaped is not an easy one sometimes, but you've all got access now to that medium to communicate what you feel and what you believe. And that, in research terms, is really very, very significant. So that, that is really what I, I just wanted to share with you, because my experiences of the day, knowing what it was like to start with the groups at the beginning, and then to see these remarkably, if you like, confident, and they are, they were confident presentations, they were professionally engaged, they were meaningful, every one of them, has for me been a remarkable um, understanding of how the collaborative inquiry which John introduced me to, because up to that point I just done individual inquiries. What Joan has actually helped me to appreciate is the power of this kind of collaboration, which we can all feel part of. Now, that's what I just wanted to end with in terms of my understanding, you know, the significance of my experiences today, but also just to leave you with that sense that everybody here could exercise their responsibility, a real personal sense of responsibility, to make public what it is that you know and that you're doing and that we've now got the social media, which freely allows us to do it. So I just want to thank all the presentations and presenters today, because for me it's been a remarkable day, and to also thank Joan and Janice, they got me involved in this, and have actually demonstrated to me the power of the collaboration. So many thanks indeed. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Um, I just, um, before we go, um, I think James wants to say a few words as well. Um, I just wanted to just briefly say what, what being part of the collaborative inquiry has meant for me, really. Um, apart from all the things that Linda was talking about, the importance of relationships, and that's come over very strongly. But right at the beginning, one of the, uh, uh, one of the questions we were seeking to ask is, you know, how can we affect change, and where does change happen? And, um, and I feel that this has shown that actually change can, can happen with practice.
practitioners and, and, and we can have you know change and growing from the ground up it doesn't always have to come from the top down and and when that's allowed to happen we can see significant shifts and i've seen that in in the practitioners that have been involved in this collaborative inquiry and it's been very exciting and it's it's a process and that process is still going on and um, there'll be one or two questions about you know well, what does this mean what does this mean for liverpool and and um, how can this be shared the practitioners themselves you heard them today they they want to share this with other people it, um I know that in our team, the way we're thinking of organising things, things have had to change. But we're certainly talking about this approach of working in networks, working collaboratively, um, and actually using the that what Jack would call the embodied knowledge that our practitioners have, and and, and drawing on that. Um, and so that that's really going to be a way that we're going to move forward with this. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. I hope that answered your question. Where's she gone? You're up there. So that's the kind of thing we're doing. And we're starting to do that through our, you know, I know you're a Senko, and we've, um, we've got our, our um, DICTAC groups, which are about trying to be a shared, learn, a shared learning forum. Um, and, and developing those communities, you know, thinking about learning communities really and doing things much more that way. Okay, um, but I just want to thank all the practitioners who have contributed so much. And actually, it has been a collective inquiry because we have all learned from one another. And, it, and we, um, we haven't had this expert model because um, it has been a learning experience working in collaboration with, with everyone. And, um, and I have had, um, actually through a very tough time, you know, with all the cuts and things, this is what's kept me going, I think. So thank you very much. And uh, I just wanted to make a bit of a response to your question as well about where to from here. You've had a number of responses, haven't you? And I think the first answer to me is I really don't know, actually. I don't know. Um, this has been a kind of milestone along the way. It's been quite a journey to get here. Um, and I guess the second part of that answer is, in large part, it depends on a lot of people, you know, everybody here today, about how this um, continues. But just to give one or two... Um, slight responses to that. One thing I do want to do is after this, we're not asking people to evaluate the day now. Um, what I want you to do, you know, I'd just like people to have the opportunity to reflect on what it's meant for you, how you've experienced it, and go away. But at some point, I will send out an email and just ask if you will send, I'll send, do some sort of questions, but just ask you to um, reflect on some of your thoughts and responses to today. And if some of you choose to do a YouTube like Jack has suggested, then that would be absolutely great, but that would not be the expectation. You could do a drawing, you could do anything creative, I guess, but just, and I would add that into the research, you know, we're, 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 we're looking at um, how we move on from here, and so your responses to today would be part of that. I think the other part of this is we've spoken a lot about the word collaborative, but actually the really important word for here for me is inquiry. I just think we don't live life enough as inquiry. And just on a very personal level, I, I think it's um, someone at Bath University wrote a book called who was it? Judy Marshall. Judy Marshall wrote a book or an article called Life as Inquiry. And I've kind of taken that on board really, because I think I live my life as inquiry and don't uh, determine from moment to moment, far less from day to day, uh, what I'm going to write about or what's going to happen or what's going to do, because I just think being open to possibilities and being open to what happens is really, really important. Where the collaboration comes in is that I don't want to do that on my own. Actually, life's not built to be done on its own. And so when I'm thinking about what I want to do and where I want to go, I want to do that in partnership with others, uh, in collaboration with others. 
Um, so my starting point for me is, is what matters to me and what my values are and what I want to do in the world. Uh, it is how I want to make a difference, but I want to be able to do that with other people. I don't want to impose what I think or what I want on you, so I really want everybody else to have the same opportunity to do that. And if I have the privilege of being able to share, you know, people will listen to me and what interests me and what I want to do. Um, then I, you know, I really delights me and does a lot for me to hear about where, you know, what you are, what you stand for, and what being true to yourself means. And we don't know where that process ends because I think that's what people have been saying. That in fact, the very first session we met together as a as a group, and I think this is what Anne was talking about when she got very emotional in the first meeting. When you begin to touch base with who you are and where you come from, what you want to be, that is quite a profound experience. And then when you start hearing where other people are at and sharing at that kind of level, that is quite a profound experience. And somewhere out of there, there's some real shift. And I think people, a lot of people who were engaged in this inquiry didn't know where it was going to go. And I think it was Carl who said she did a written account quite recently, sent it to me. And she said, right after the first meeting or so, she'd go away and uh, say to one or two of the others, oh, I really enjoyed that. And um, what was it about? <laughs> <laughs> and there was that real kind of issue about it. So um, the, the, the inquiry, again, the, another question that came up was something about the managers. Someone earlier on asked about, you know, about the nature of the managers who've spoken here, and I think the managers who have been part of this inquiry are very special, and I think the important thing to me is that they too have been open to possibilities. You heard Anne's presentation, Justin, actually every manager who's spoken here, and the, the important thing is that they've been willing to listen and to understand that they are learning too. Um, Julie was saying that in abundance uh, earlier on, and, um, and I think the problem that many of you experience is that managers often see themselves as being fixers, they see themselves as having the answers, they see themselves as having the policies, they know what good practice is, or they, and I think if you're working in a context where that happens, it becomes more difficult, because to do what we're doing to really, really work, everyone needs to be open to possibilities and to live their life as inquiry, and to do that individually, and to do that collectively. And yes, to be guided by a shared set of values, that's the commonality. But if you're allowing your behavior, both individual and collective, to be influenced by a shared set of values, actually it's amazing, you don't really need to have a set of rules, because the, the right kind of behavior emerges for itself. And it's that to a great extent that I think has happened through this process. So I really look forward to being in touch with you. I do hope there's been enough interview <coughs> to interest you enough to, to respond to whatever we set up and hopefully continue this process on some time. And uh, I just thank you all for being part of the day. It's been great to have you here. <laughs>